Hello, Jamie Bernadette. It's Mark Krawcheck, or Mark the Movie Man, however you want to call it. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Uh, so glad you could uh, take time out of your busy schedule to uh, talk about uh, your new film, Dead by Dawn, and uh, just in general, uh, talk maybe about some of your career things as well, and, and your past films and upcoming stuff. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me and talking to me. Oh, yeah, you bet. I've been actually uh, hoping to uh, interview you for a while because I've uh, followed a number of your films. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's just great that we can get this opportunity. Uh, how's quarantine treating you? Um, It's not too bad. I mean, I'm getting a lot done. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. How well, about you? <laughs> yeah, it, it's... Uh, it's doing okay. I work IT during my day job, so uh, we get to work from home. So, uh, so that is a benefit, I guess. So, uh, keeping ourselves distanced. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, that's good that you still have your job and everything. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, as of right now, anyway. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so you know, but uh, I feel for a lot of the people out there um, right now. But uh, you know, I, I think we'll all get through this for sure. Uh, yeah uh, yeah we will and and you know there's there's plenty of streaming entertainment out there like uh your new film coming out uh next week uh, dead by dawn so, yeah um, good timing for it to come out i think there's a yeah. lot of people are almost everyone's at home people looking for uh entertainment there's plenty out there and uh there's uh this one now what i usually like to do is uh ask uh the person who is involved in the film would you uh be kind to give just the uh, short synopsis of, of Dead by Dawn. Sure. Um, it's about a girl who's assaulted and she escapes and goes to this random stranger's home in the country and knocks on the door and the man inside was just about to commit suicide. So he has his own thing going on and um, they, they meet up two strangers and then um, three villains show up and they want the girl and so basically it's like um a fight between the two of them and the three of us and and you play uh i i was kind of surprised uh the role you play is snack who's who's actually a villain uh because most of the films uh that i've seen you in at least in the past uh you're you're the one uh you know the final girl or or the one kind of the hero so what what you know what was it about snack that made you want to uh, take on this role um well i mean it's different and playing a villain is really really fun and yeah i do like to um stretch my craft and and play different roles there's all kinds of roles i would love to play in the future as well that are different so it was just yeah she was she was so much fun in in the way um she was written in the way I interpreted and collaborating with Sean, the director. I think, you know, I just have this over the top crazy character. She's just wacko. So um, <laughs> it was just something I could have a lot of fun with. Yeah, and it, it does come across screen that you are having a lot of fun with uh, a few of the looks and such that you have. It's just, it seems like you're, you're really uh, getting into the role now. Uh, did you, uh, were there any inspirations or things that you, uh, uh, you know, pulled from either from characters from other movies or that uh, to help kind of uh, bring Snack to life? Not really. I mean, yeah, I just kind of created her on my own. Um, I mean, I'm not a opposed to looking at other performances <laughs> and performers for inspiration. But yeah, sometimes I do like to create my own without anything else in mind and, and see what happens and <laughs> what I come up with. So, so it sounds like the, the director gave you some freedom on what to do with the character then. Oh, for sure. I mean, of course it was in the script too. Like she sings, you know, these little wicked rhymes and, mm -hmm. you know, fights in the air with her knife when there's nothing there. So just stuff and the stuff that she says. So, I mean, the writing did give me, um, you know, a, a path mm -hmm. to start down for sure, because it is in the script how that she's just, just over the top wacko. Um, 
has some screws loose. Um, so yeah, there's a guide guide. And uh, your uh, your partners in crime also seem uh, rather wacko in uh, different ways. Uh, <laughs> definitely a, a cast of, of dark characters. Uh, you all all seem to have good chemistry on on screen, though. Uh, had you worked with any of them before? No, actually, I hadn't. Mm-hmm. Um, Chad, I know, worked with Sean before, the director. Uh, Bo, I, I helped cast the film, so I gave my input, and I, I was there for Bo's audition, and I really wanted Bo. Like, I was like, Bo, 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 <laughs> Bo. Like, usually there's a couple options. There were a couple options Sean was considering, and I pushed for Bo. I really thought he was fantastic. Um but yeah, they were both great. I and we're all different. I mean, it's very rare in a film that you'll have like three villains like that. They're usually all the same kind of. They're in a gang and they're dressed the same. Like we're very different. Like Chad's wearing like a business suit. Bo looks like he's from the farm or something. <laughs> and I look like I'm into witchcraft and goth. So it just. Yeah, it's just very rare a movie they'll have three villains and have them be so different. The same as, you know, the the protagonists inside are, are so serious and playing it that way. And then um, we could have gone the route of, like, strangers, like with mm-hmm. Liv Tyler, where, you know, we're all very dark and serious the whole time. And it's – but we contrasted and we have three villains outside who are almost at times funny – So it like it's in the same way that the three of us don't quote unquote match the what's going on inside and outside also doesn't match. But it's it's different in that horror films. You don't see that it's either either funny or like super dark, Mm -hmm. you know, usually. But so I think it is a unique film in that way. It's it's something that's been done before, but as far as the plot line and stuff, but I think the way that Sean created it um, is different. And some critics don't know how to take that, you know? They're like, what's going on here? But yeah, it's, it's different. Well, that's why I love indie films is uh, that you always, you know, you get, uh, individuals who who aren't afraid to take chances and do something different with uh, expectations, especially in the genre of horror, which is so vast and has so many films out. Um, and you know, and I like that. I I, I like the diverse uh, diversity in the different personalities of the villains uh, that we had, but also I liked our uh, how you had everything set up with the hero and and the um, and Lulu, you know, the the victim. Uh, their dynamic, and especially the Dylan character, uh, you know, I, I felt this was a bit different because he himself had uh, some serious issues. I mean, you know, uh, what was the motivation about making him kind of a, a, a flawed hero? Was that, uh, you know, something from the beginning or did that something that evolved as the, uh, you know, you went on with the film and the characters? Uh, I mean, I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, Sean, you know, must have decided that early on, I would imagine. But Mm -hmm. I like characters that have kind of their own backstory and issues going on, because we all have our own issues going on in life. So I I like it when um, characters are um, deeper, Mm -hmm. you know, so I I do like uh, the choice that was made for that character. And you uh you mentioned uh, uh casting as well you you helped produce this film this is uh your third film that i think is now that's been out that you've produced uh you know uh, how much uh, involvement did you have in that and and what kind of challenge was that to juggle producing and acting in front of the camera well i mean i i was cast by Sean uh i'd never worked with him before he just saw my past work and just cast me without auditioning or me or anything. We met for lunch and then I just started helping him out with things. Mm -hmm. Um, like I helped him with casting, um, costumes, um, giving input on distribution and stuff like that, that he just 
it felt I had helped him so much um, because, you know, like, as you said, I've done this before and that he wanted to give me um, the producer credit because he felt it was due, it owed or, you know, wanted to do that. So that's kind of how that came about. It wasn't like with The Sixth Friend and State of Desolation where I produced it from the, the ground up, from the inception mm-hmm. through to completion. Um, it wasn't like that with this. It, so that's that's how that um, transpired. And and how long was the production? Because the location you got was was beautiful, um, and and I was just wondering how long it, it took to shoot out there at at uh, basically the same location, a uh, single cabin. You know, I'm actually not quite sure of the number. We filmed it in 2018, and I know um, we shot me out pretty fast, my stuff, because I had to leave and go to South Africa to do The Furnace, mm-hmm. um, my next film. So I'm not – gosh, I don't recall how many days total that they did, to be honest. So uh, I noticed uh, with your uh, lineup, especially with IMDb, you, you keep pretty – uh, busy with projects you have a lot of them uh either coming out soon or uh in pre-production in that but i don't think a lot of people realize with indie films that it is some time between a lot of times when they're finally distributed versus when you shoot them uh as you said this was shot in uh, 2018 uh oh. you know so uh, that must be a little tough to keep uh, track uh, occasionally for you um i know for some others as well uh, for that. I mean, does that make it a, a little tough occasionally, uh, jumping from project to project or does that just keep things fresh for you? Um, well, I mean, as far as it, sometimes it can take a, a little bit for them to come out. I have a, I have a really good memory. So sure. people who know me know, know that. <laughs> sure. I, sure. It's crazy. I, I remember dates like nothing else and stuff. <laughs> weird things but anyway so i don't know for me it's not difficult to keep track of them maybe because i do have a good memory I'm, I'm not really sure but um i'm also being these days very um selective about what i'm taking so sure. i'm not taking everything i'm offered not even close i'm i'm being very selective um so i'm not overwhelming myself with sure. like you know, 20 projects, 20 independent films in a year. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, I'm very grateful that I, I have, I've had the opportunity to be able to do that, but I've chosen not to just cause I'm being very selective and I want my career to go in a, a particular direction. Um, sure. So for me, it's not hard to keep track of them because I'm, I'm I'm not taking everything these days, you know. And nothing at all uh, wrong with that. It's good to be selective. Is there anything in particular that uh, stands out to you when you're looking at projects that uh, uh, you know you may want to take on, like a a different character you haven't done before, or maybe a different genre? <sighs> yes, there's a lot of things I consider. Like this um, last film I was working on. Um, uh, right before the virus hit, we had to stop in the middle, but we're going to resume as soon as things are back to normal. But, um, it was, um, an 1800s Western thriller horror. Oh, cool. And yeah, I always wanted to do like an 1800s piece in the South and it was exactly what I had been wanting to do. So I, I was just like, and it was, um, one of the leading roles. So Great script, great filmmakers. So I was just like, there was no way I was not doing this project, you know. And then um, there's other times, like, especially since I spit on your grave, even before it was released. And then after, like, wow, I've it's I probably had 25 to 30 offers since it's been released. But, uh, you know, a lot of the offers are like cameos, like mm-hmm. one. They, and there's nothing wrong with that um, at all. And and maybe I will do some of those in the future. Um, it's possible. It, it depends on the project. Like I said, I look at every project individually and take a lot of things into consideration. Um, but I do tend to gravitate more towards um, in the independent film world, more towards like leading or really strong supporting roles. Um 
Like I don't want to, I don't want to almost like oversaturate and do every one day thing I'm offered to make quick cash. Like, you know, I've been offered, made, had some nice offers, but I don't, I just kind of don't want my career to go in that direction where, you know, they're like, oh, there's Jamie on screen in one scene and, and <laughs> over and over again. I, I, that's not really what I want um, personally, but like I, the actors who do that, that's fine for them. It, it's working and that's what they want to do. There's nothing wrong with that. But it, for me, I gravitate more towards, like I said, the larger supporting or, or lead roles. And and, in, and like you mentioned, stuff I haven't done before, I, I get really super excited about. Um, though I do like doing the, I play the protagonist final girl a lot. That's always a blast. I do accept those roles still and, and love doing that. But yeah, there's stuff I want to do, um, you know, um, as well that may make me take a film like this 1800s piece. Sure. I was like, yes, that's something I've never done. And so I was so excited. But yeah, I just I don't know. It's a long answer. I know. But no. I, I really do. I take so much into consideration the director, the script, the other actors. I'm like, who's the cinematographer? Like, you know, so many factors sure. when I accept something. Yeah, and it definitely, especially with uh, indie cinema and, and so many productions out there now uh, that I can imagine uh, you would want to be, uh, you know, consider a lot of factors because I've heard some, uh, I've heard some stories of <laughs> some <laughs> some wrong choices uh, people made. So, uh, you know, and and I was wondering, uh, are you a fan of horror? Because uh, you have done a, a number of thrillers and, and horrors, uh, horror films, uh, and that's a, a genre I really love. Uh, are, are you a fan of that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I have been a fan since I've been a child. Like I grew up watching old films um, like Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho and the Birds, like with my mom. We love that. The first Halloween film we loved. Like <laughs> we played on TV, Halloween one and two. I mean, we'd get so excited about. I loved the original Nightmare on Elm Street. So I loved, of course, the first Scream and it came out and, um, so yeah, I've always, always loved horror, always, and always wanted to do horror films. But I, you know, I do do television, and mm -hmm. I've come really close to booking series regular roles, and I'm hoping one day. So I do love horror, but I'm not carp. I'm not like um, putting myself into that genre only, either. Sure. I, I, I was bored. Yeah. Wondering if you were a fan, cause it seems like you really get into those roles and uh, do you have a, a, a particular favorite horror film or thriller that, you know, like you always go to? Um, I love the descent. Oh, nice. Uh, Good choice. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I love the first Halloween film. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the Texas chainsaw with Jessica Biel. Like I, that's a, her acting is phenomenal in that. Um, and yeah. yes, Psycho. Um, there's just so many. <laughs> yeah, Conjuring is really good. I was like blown away by how good that was. Oh, the Conjuring. Yeah, the yes. that one was that one was solid. I'm I'm not too much on the supernatural horror, but uh, you mentioned two of my favorites for sure. Uh, at, well, you mentioned the remake, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which I actually do enjoy. The remake, though, the original is always near and dear to my heart. Uh, but Psycho is really a go-to horror film that one i just watch and i go i see very little if no flaws in that film <laughs> yes i know it's, it's incredible you know uh what about uh home invasion films because uh dead by dawn is is it's i guess you could consider it a home invasion type film uh you know uh, any in particular that you enjoyed like the first purge or uh any that come to mind at all to you um, Stra Strangers, that's what it's called, right? With Liv Tyler. Oh, right. Um, yep. You mentioned before. Yeah. Yeah. That was really disturbing. That was a true <laughs> story too. Yeah. Right? Like, I can't believe people would do the how sick, you know, but yeah, I did enjoy the purge. That's, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that too. <laughs> well, I think home invasion films work. Uh, so well because uh, all of us uh, think of our home as as our sanctuary 
or that that safe place and you know and then when you have three uh, psychos outside that want to bust into your home uh it, it can be disturbing <laughs> yeah yeah for sure for sure now you, you also had some makeup effects done i, I don't want to spoil too much with the movie but there were some makeup effects done did that uh, take a long time to uh set up and, and, and apply uh in in dead by dawn um yeah i mean it it took a bit and yeah it was a lot of blood and <laughs> i'm not trying to give away anything either no, but, but yeah the girl uh, marina i actually she was my referral i've worked with her many many times and she is really fast <laughs> and really good so it didn't take too terribly long um but yeah that was my last shoot day and i remember that i had to like leave the next day but yeah it, it gets intense with the makeup you know um the applying it and and washing it off can can be int intense depending on all what you have on sure um, this time i think she did use some prosthetics and stuff i'm trying to remember but um yeah yeah, well, it looked really good. So uh, <laughs> I was, I was wondering how long that took because it looked really good on camera, uh, for sure. Uh, now, you you've mentioned uh, uh, the the sixth friend and uh, a number of your other projects, especially with the sixth friend. You had uh, written it, started it, and produced it pretty much from the ground up. Uh, I was very impressed. Uh, which one of those roles did you find uh, probably the most challenging? Producing producing yeah and i i was a co-writing effort i wrote the first draft and mm -hmm. leash director wrote the second and we bounced it back and forth and like nine times before we shot which really that's not a lot of revisions i hear like <laughs> movies doing way more but but no um the producing is the hardest thing i've ever done in my life hands down mm -hmm. it's especially the the more crew you have like at one point, we had 35 crew, so some more people you have to handle and deal with. And I mean, with even little things like, oh, this person didn't like the lunch or wants something different or, you know, needs a new bed where they're staying or there's issues with just that you would never even imagine that come up, mm -hmm. um, which is understandable. So when you're acting in the film also and then producing it is very challenging it's by far the hardest thing I've ever done and then you know you have aesthetic differences that come in with your team like um which we really didn't have too many we agreed on much of that myself the other producer and, and the director thankfully that was smooth like in post-production and stuff getting through the sound the music the editing we they, we had a, we pretty much agreed so yeah, that was pretty smooth, but that can get rough too. Like I know I wanted one scene deleted in the Six Friend that the director did not want deleted, and we talked a bit. We're very level. We're both very level-headed people, so we talked it out, and you know, decided. I said, okay, we'll keep it in. You know, mm -hmm. um, people do. They like that scene, so yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Well, it, it, the film still turned out uh, really well, so, uh, uh, you know, mad props to everyone involved. Uh, but, yeah, I, I can imagine. I don't think people realize, I, some people, I think, realize producers might just be the money people, and then those who have worked on it, I think, you know, realize how many uh, things you have to deal with when you are producers. So uh, I always find that interesting what people think it is versus what, you end up finding out it actually is. <laughs> oh, yes. Like, yeah, in our industry, like an executive producer's more brings the money is kind of how I've noticed we think of it as. And then a producer is like doing the grunt work from the contracts to, yeah, the little things that I mentioned to all the post-production to distribution, everything. You know, and yeah, sometimes those lines get crossed. Like the film I'm executive producing now, um, Homestead, they hired me as an actor also, and I ended up helping so much, kind of the same situation. And anyway, might be bringing some money. And so I might help with distribution as well. So it's, I'm sure I will. Um, so 
it's crossing the lines between what we think of as an executive producer to a producer. But yeah, those those terms in our business do um, people do think of them differently, especially like you said, in the outside world, they mm. they really don't understand what what a producer does. <laughs> Yeah, in, including uh, picking locations and securing all of that fun stuff. Uh, yeah. Speaking huh. of locations, you got to go to South Africa for the furnace. That was uh, South Africa, correct? Yes. Yeah. And and how was that experience? Oh man, it was one of the best experiences of my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had never been to that country and I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with the people. Like some of my best friends now are South African and I just connect with the people there and the culture and feel at home there. I've spent a total of five months there now. Wow. Uh, yeah. it, it, that, that's a lot. I, I've seen uh, some pictures in that and it just does look like some, uh, uh beautiful country is is the film industry a little bit different over there than in the u.s or are indie filmmakers kind of uh the same uh, uh, across the world it's the same yeah yeah, yeah. it's the same <laughs> it, it, um, the universal so language of film right yes yes I will say in South Africa um a lot of them are lacking jobs mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. uh, yeah so gosh wow they're you know so grateful to be on a film because yeah they just don't have as many as we do here sure um so yeah but people are grateful here too i'm not you know of course right. yeah there's just a sense of just in south africa wow the the need there is as um is higher you know what i mean they're yep. yeah yeah, a lot of poverty there. Yeah, well, that it's great that you uh, got to have that experience, though. You did have kind of a, I hear a close call with a a, a lion, was it, or a, a a feline? Um. Well, I did. I worked with um, cheetahs, two mm -hmm. cheetahs and elephant hyenas. The lion wasn't being filmed at the same time I was, so oh, okay. that was kept away from me it's sure, incredible sure. how the director worked that and how it worked in the movie like <laughs> i don't know how he figures this stuff out but yeah i never worked with a lion um directly yeah mm. I, I was wondering uh, about that because there were a number of animals in the film so i was wondering how they uh handled some of that <laughs> uh, uh, so i'm pretty i don't know animals like tend to i'm pretty calm mm -hmm. person I don't know if that helped me in that movie. <laughs> animals do tend to like me, I've noticed. Like, they tend to, yeah. So, the animals were fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to hear. Uh, now, uh, you we mentioned a lot of diverse roles. One of them, I actually caught a short film that you were in. Uh, where you actually got to play a, a fairly iconic, uh, well, no, it did not fairly, an iconic, uh, comic book character in a, in a short, uh, I believe it was called Injustice for All, where you got to play Catwoman. How was that? Oh, it was so much fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is a time I did watch performances of other actresses to mm -hmm. see what they did in the past and, yeah, I didn't really use any of it though. I kind of, I kind of took her my own direction and um, made her more of a vulnerable character. Um, but yeah, it was, it was awesome. I that short is wow. They did a great job with it. Yeah, it's it's a really solid short. It actually made me want to see more of of that that world uh, and those actors and 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 just that whole crew and everything. Uh, see more of that film than than what we just got out of it. So I was just. I was really impressed, and uh, yeah, they they got your costume very accurate for for Catwoman as well. Uh, with it, mm -hmm. uh, the whole production I thought was really well done, especially for a short. Uh, as yeah. Well. So, yeah, I mean, you've got a very diverse cast, uh, 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 library of films already, and uh, what do you have coming up uh, in the near future? You mentioned uh, some of the films, but uh, anything that people can look forward to besides Dead by Dawn, which is coming out April 7th, um, anything new 
uh, that they should look on the horizon that's still going to get released this year that you know of? Um, yeah, I did a sci-fi called Colonials, so that was a lot of fun, and I've done a, not too many other sci-fis, so I was happy to, yeah, it was a lot of something different, and um, and it's a different, kind of a, a different role for me as well, so look out for that, I'm the lead female in that, and um, and then I have Nicole Horex and the Killer, which is a really well-written um, horror film. Mm-hmm. There was a 20 page scene in there we shot nonstop, 20 pages. Wow. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> it was, and Tracy Lords plays my mother in that, and she is a phenomenal actress. My gosh. Um, and she's in that scene with me, that 20 pager. So <laughs> look out for that. Um, and then Ash and Bone I have coming out, which is a horror, and I'm a. a strong supporting role in that um state of desolation we hope to have it out this this year it's a post-apocalyptic film uh horror drama more on the drama side i would say with with horror elements and we're working on finishing that up in in sound sound design those all sound like very interesting product uh projects uh definitely keep an eye peeled for it you uh, mentioned you are a, a female lead in uh, this the new sci-fi, The Colonials, coming out. Are you seeing, uh, with all the scripts that you're getting, with kind of the way slowly the culture seems to be changing, are you seeing a lot more uh, uh, female-led scripts that uh, you're receiving or that are, are being produced out there or made out there, or uh, is it still seem pretty scarce? No, well, no, I think um, the lead in that is a guy, though. So oh, okay. I'm the lead female. Sure. But in that sci-fi, it is a man. But, I mean, I think that, um, no, I think for horror, it's usually the lead is a female. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as other genres, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Well, um, I know it's always a leads a female sure. usually, and that hasn't changed. That's been that way, and it's still that way. Um, but as far as other genres, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't know if you had seen any in uh, the other scripts that you had received. It, it seems like we are getting a few more uh, than we did in the past, though maybe not as many as, as we probably like to see out there, but it does seem things are changing i mean uh we uh, uh, more female directors seem to be coming forward uh at least in the indie scene which is good to see but uh, Mm -hmm. you know uh it it seems to be slowly turning but uh it'd be nice to be a little bit quicker i think (laughs) yes the female directors it's really lacking i mean i think in all my projects which how many do i have now 60 like 70 Mm -hmm. i don't really know but how many female directors have I worked with? Three? I mean, that's bad. Yeah, we need to... We need more. <laughs> yeah, it would be uh, nice uh, nice to see. Now, uh, Are you? Uh, would you be uh, looking for uh, more possibly directing opportunities in the future as well? Uh, not just uh, with the acting and uh, producing, but uh, direction as well? I'm absolutely considering it. And I've mm-hmm. been having a lot of friends and trying to encourage me to, to direct. Um, and I do love working with actors. Like I'll tape act my friends auditions for them. And I have friends that want me to coach them. You know, they mm-hmm. ask for it. I wouldn't normally step in unless they ask. And um, like one of my friends is like, I always get a call back or almost book it when you tape me. So he <laughs> only wants to come to me and, I end up coaching him and stuff. So it is something that I enjoy and I love actors and, and I feel like I understand them cause I am an actor and I love watching. And when I watch movies too, I pay attention to the way the director's choosing to, to do the camera. If they're doing a wide shot or zooming in or um, panning over or like, and why. And so I've, I've definitely um, had my sights set on that for sure. And I think it's just going to take the right script and then I'm going to do it. Well, I definitely look forward to seeing that uh, as well, uh, because I I think uh, definitely we need uh, more female directors out there because I think there's a lot of talent 
out there that just doesn't get uh, get enough attention uh, or opportunities. So hopefully uh, you do get that opportunity soon to direct. Uh, so I know I definitely would watch it. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I hope I wouldn't disappoint you. No, no. <laughs> it'd, be I... owner, it'd be my first time. So I would want a really <laughs> strong cinematographer. I've, yeah, I already know who I would want. But mm -hmm. yeah, it would be like, wow, something I haven't done. And I'd be nervous. But I'm, yeah. It, thank you. It, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just sounds like fun. And uh, it'd definitely be a, interesting to see because you you do have a lot of uh, experience in front of the camera uh, you've been doing indie uh, cinema for a while now so uh uh yeah it, it definitely would be interested in in seeing that so and what is your your quarantine playlist uh what what have you been have you been watching anything and uh i'm just curious what what any particular movie or series that you may have been uh, watching while we're all uh safer at home or stuck at home you know, I haven't been watching um, too much. Yeah, TV. I'm I'm on the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I'm on the third season. Oh, nice! <laughs> it's really funny. But I had watched the two seasons a, a while ago, a long time ago. But yeah, I'm on like I don't know. I haven't watched that much of it though. I've been I've been reading more. I'm actually reading Harry Potter series right now. <laughs> Um, cause I've never read it and I've never seen any of the films cause I always wanted to read the books first. So I have all the films on Blu-ray, like ready to be watched. So as soon as I'm done with the, the books, mm -hmm. I'm going to read the series. I'm so nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading like these kids books right now. So between that and then all these interviews I'm doing to, for dead sure. by dawn and everything else I have scripts, I've been offered in reading those and, actually been very busy and yeah i haven't i haven't watched many movies or anything um yeah so which harry potter book are you on then i'm almost done with the second book oh okay so you've got you've got the uh you've got the big one to go through yet azkaban then uh mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i read fast though i'm fast well that's good oh. uh, my my wife reads fast too. I don't read fast. Uh, I did read the first two books of the Hunger Games before I saw the films, uh, and I did read through the Harry Potters, but those took me some time. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, how are you liking the Harry Potter series? I'm I'm curious. I like it. <laughs> I like it. It's so creative. I'm like, how does she think of this stuff? Like, it's just amazing. Yeah, it is really a. a a great world so i i think uh you'll be impressed with the the movies as well once uh once you get through the books so uh though uh, you know a couple of them they had to whittle down because some of those books are uh, get rather lengthy and uh the movies you couldn't do that without making like a four-hour film <laughs> oh i'm sure yeah <laughs> so yeah uh, uh, I guess we'll, we'll wrap it up here. I just uh, maybe a final word of advice for uh, maybe any uh, young actresses out there looking to, uh, you know, looking any advice for them on, on uh, what they should maybe do or what steps or, or just general advice for any up and coming uh, actress looking to get into film. Yeah, I yeah, I always say the same thing when people ask me this question and it's it's not to listen to the negativity like no matter where you're at in life and what you're doing, I mean, when, especially I think when you want to do something with like this, you're going to hear people tell you how you can't do it and why, and just don't, don't listen to it. Just follow your heart and, you know, do what, do what your purpose in life is. I think, I don't know. I think that's important to living a happy life is following your purpose. So well, it, it's great advice, and uh, again, I appreciate you taking busy uh, your you know time out of your busy schedule to uh, talk to us today about Dead by Dawn out April seventh on VOD, and is it DVD as well? It'll be on DVD as well. Ah, okay. Uh, I apologize. I, I had my notes in front of me, and I accidentally closed them. Uh, <laughs> way, it's all right. Way, way too many things open. So. Well, Jamie, uh, thank you so much again. I appreciate your time. And yeah, we'll, we'll look for those new projects. Uh, oh, I, I almost forgot to ask, is there a place where they can go to check up on your latest projects uh, and, and keep up to date with what you're currently working on? 
Yeah, um, I'm on Twitter, Jamie Bernadette. The E is not on the end of my name, um, but it's a verified account. So you can find me easily. And then I'm on Instagram under Jamie Bernadette, just like my name. It's a verified account as well. Um, so you know it's me. And then on Facebook, um, you know, I have a, a page, but it's open to the public and I have my follow button turned on so you can follow all my posts are public. So you can follow me on there as well. Fantastic. And I'll put links to that as well uh, for this uh, interview. I'll put those on the page as well. So, all right. Well, I hope uh, you folks check out Dead by Dawn and we will uh, talk to you later. All right. All thank right. you so much. Well, thank you, Jamie. Uh, and I uh, hope uh, stay safe and stay healthy, I should say. You too. So,